Today, I'm presenting a draft manuscript titled A Course and Tutorial on Creating 3D Models Using Methods in Focus Stacking and Photogrammetry for Extending Research Through Image and Trait Digitization. This work is co-authored by myself and Dr. Katja Seltman of UC Santa Barbara Cheadle Center. Some background on Big B. Big B is a collection of over 13 institutions whose job is to digitally record in an open source format over a million 2D images and 3D models representing over 5,500 bee species. My job is to create a workflow and a system that allows the creation of the 2D images and the 3D models to take place. This workflow is gonna focus on two individual specimens, Apis mellifera and Halictus tripartitis. For the sake of this presentation, we're gonna focus just on Halictus. What the system does is it combines focus stacking techniques, which allow you to capture image data through a subject in order to generate a high quality image that's completely in focus. The system incorporates a widespread of optics, allowing you to photograph from 1 to 100x magnification, which could yield anywhere from 4 centimeter sized specimens down to about 2 microns uh, of information for details on specimens. The hardware system that we're using integrates off-the-shelf products uh, from Cognosys, Macroscopic Solutions, Canon, and so forth, which allows us to capture very detailed images um, through the specimen for focus stacking, and it also allows us to rotate the specimen on a gimbal in order to capture a uh, different perspective of that specimen. And that data is what we're going to be using in order to build photogrammetric models. So as you can see here, we have a specimen that's placed on top the universal stage. It's essentially a gimbal, which allows you to float the specimen at a center point, but then rotate and manipulate the specimen from all angles. Now what we're doing here is we're integrating focus stacking techniques and rotational um, imaging so that we can photograph the specimen around a 360 degree reference frame at different degrees. And what that does uh, is it gives us a data set that allows us to build a full-on stereo model of the specimen from 2D images alone. You also see some innovations that were created as a product of Big B uh, and its success. This light dome that you see cancels out um, much of the uh, direct light that would emit glare and also balances out the light for the specimens so that after you capture your complete data set, every image looks exactly the same. The lighting should be calibrated across all photos. We also have a standardized data set. So depending on the magnification that you're at, uh, we are able to give you starting points that allow you to sort of move from point A to point B and capture the image uh, without too much modification from either side. Once uh, you have your settings figured out, your hardware is all set up, the next thing is to do is to actually capture your images. For this, you use EOS Remote Utility to get your lighting correct and image your specimens. And all of the images that you're going to be capturing are going to be stored in a file uh, that's just going to be stored on your desktop. So what we have here is a collection of 41 images that is a focus stacked frame and then the specimen will rotate every four degrees. Every four degrees giving us 90 different perspectives around a 360 degree circle. So the goal here is to separate out each individual frame so that we can focus stack them. For this, we use a platform called Folderax. Here, what we do is we select our directory, we tell it how many um, files we want in each folder, and we press split, and that splits each batch into its own folder. These folders, are then pulled into Zareen Stacker for batch processing. So what we then can do is batch focus stack all of these images uh, while we're then capturing our next round of images or focusing on the next specimen. The image here on the left is the da data that we are inputting. The image on the right is the final output image. In order to edit, we also have a batch editing process, which <coughs> allows you to record the functions or the edits that you make within Photoshop along one image. You discard those changes while recording them in history, which is accessed by the window menu that you see in Photoshop. And then you'll run an image processor in order to apply those changes to all the images uh, in the folder that you've stored and saved the output focus stacked images. So that allows you to batch edit everything that you're doing pretty seamlessly. 
In order to do the photogrammetry, we're using Agisoft Metashape. The first step here is to mask your, uh, your image. So what we're doing is we're capturing the, the overall shape of the specimen so the software can better align our picture frames. This is automated as well. What we do is we import a black picture frame. If your background is black, what it will do is draw a mask around your specimen automatically, apply this to all the images, and then you're going to run a basic alignment, which will then align uh, all of the um, pictures around your specimen. The result is a low density point cloud that you see here. This low density point cloud um, does two things. One is it gives you a starting point in order to build and triangulate your model. Uh, and the next is to align the picture frames, basically where your camera sensor was relative to the actual specimen. From here you want to create your mesh. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using depth maps to basically create a stereo uh, of each frame from picture to picture. This then will triangulate a model and create uh, your final mesh. What I've done here is created a low quality mesh. This actually took about six minutes to produce with 32 gigabytes of RAM and compare this directly with a high quality mesh, which you can see is actually successfully modeled the hairs, but you do see some artifacts here where the wings have holes and so forth. But I'm gonna show everybody how to fix that in a moment. So to close holes, what you can do, there's actually a tool function right here in Azure Soft Metashape. You're going to select the area where there's a hole, and you're going to basically cancel out the zones that have holes, and then you're just going to uh, reselect them and basically hit close holes, and then you're going to patch those sections. The next step is to build a texture uh, along your workflow, and what you're going to do, this is basically going to take your JPEG and your TIFF images and apply the texture uh, from the image data right over top of your model. And now you're left with uh, your model that is fully completed, but still has some room for improvement. In order to do that, you're going to want to export your model. Uh, in order to export what you'll, what we typically save them as is wavefront.obj files. And then we save the texture as a .tiff file. And we're going to be turning to the off the shelf uh, program called Blender. Blender is fully open source, it's free, but it has a lot of functionality and can be very difficult for some people to use. Luckily, uh, some folks over at the Los Angeles Natural History Museum, Kate Ryan and Sylvia Reyes, uh, gave me some pointers on what to do to get started. The first thing you'll do in Blender is open it, and you're going to right click and delete the uh, preset shape that you'll see in there. The next step is to simply import your model, and then you'll want to hit Control B in order to basically bring your model to center. You don't want to move your model because that's going to change where it's going to be located in the reference frame for Agisoft. So you don't never want to move it, but you can pan the screen. You pan uh, by basically clicking this hand here, and while holding down, you drag the screen, and you can also flip and rotate your model by using the XYZ functions here. After you do that, you want to select the model in the collection and you want to press tab, which allows you to go to editing mode. Once you're in editing mode, you can right click, you can drag different triangles, and you can shrink, flatten, modify, press, pull, or even close holes uh, in this function. And this part can be quite intuitive. Did highlight here, sometimes uh, where your preset to the square selection uh, tool set in the upper left hand side. It's a lot easier if you use a lasso tool to select your points. Uh, but once you are at this point, uh, the editing aspects of, of Blender do become quite intuitive and you get to play around uh, here. So this is kind of the first starting points and how you would go around about editing. As an example, you can see I have some triangles that I selected via the lasso tool and I've hit command uh, control F in order to modify the face and then I closed the holes and re-imported that model uh, right back into Agisoft Metashape. The texture was reapplied, and now my holes in the wings are fully closed. Uh, then at the end, you can also add some scale bars. For this case, what I did is I just measured the length of the pin, and I placed two markers into Agisoft across the pin, and then set the scale bar in a reference pane. Now, I know that was a lot of information to cover in 10 minutes, I do have a YouTube channel I do want to pull your attention to. This is at Macroscopic Solutions LLC, where I have complete video walkthroughs uh, that can help guide you. And I do just want to thank all my partners and everybody that's involved on the project uh, and the other um, people that you, you see here. I apologize for the timer. 
Uh, but that's it, and I am here if there is time for questions. Thank you very much.